Well, we are in a series on wisdom called Wrong Answers Only. Uh, I'm going to jump right in reading Proverbs 3, 13 to 18. So if you can put that up on the screen, it goes as this. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields a better return than gold. She's more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her hand and in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. And I want to live a life that's wise. I don't want to be a fool. Somebody say, I don't want to be a fool. Yeah, don't be foolish. Be wise. Um, but one thing that we can tend to do is... Uh, live to the lowest common denominator or the wrong answer on things. Last week, Pastor Justin talked about the la wrong answers of good enough and not that bad. Like, ah, it's good enough. It's not that bad. No one's going to see it. Um, but we can actually live up to the goodness and the greatness that God has in store for us. But it takes faith and it takes um, committing our ways to him. It takes setting our hearts and our minds on things above, not just on things down here. Um, so I want to live a wise life. Um, today, the wrong answer that we're going to talk about is trust the universe. Trust the universe. So I'm 31, 31, and I have social media, a.k.a. I have YouTube. Um, I don't have Facebook, so I don't know if this is on Facebook, but right now there's a trend where there'd be people talking about trusting you, the universe or things like that. And it's so funny that just what it is. So I'm going to do a, a TikTok demonstration. I don't have TikTok, but I know what it is. So this is my TikTok de demonstration. And in those, like, for one of these Trust the Universe TikToks, that was basically, like, everything's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. Trust the universe. And then, like, the nod, like, it's some, somehow helping your life. And then it's got, like, a 1,000 likes. And then if you look at the comments, it's so funny. Because you've got some, someone who's like, you're an idiot. And then you've got someone else being like, thank you so much. That helped me through whatever I'm going through. I'm like, good Lord. If that's what's helping you out, good luck. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, so the wrong answer is um, trust the universe. The other day, I was getting uh, new tires. And I was at the tire shop. And someone before me had just finished paying and left. Um, so I was talking to the guys at the front. They were just doing some paperwork. So I went and sat in the lobby. And the guy who was before me came running back in. And he's like, the universe told me to come back. And the guy sitting at the counter was like, OK. <laughs> and then the guy's like, I'm looking at my receipt. And there is a $10 charge for each of my tires. Why did you charge me 10 extra dollars? for each of my tires. And the guy was like, oh, well, you wanted the cheapest tires. We didn't have them. So I gave you the premium tires, but I had to give you a staff discount in order to get them close to the same price. And the $10 was to make up the difference. So you paid the same as much for the better tires. And the guy was like, I knew it. The universe provides. And then just walked off as quick as he came in. And I thought to myself, that guy is a little bit nutty. Um, and then I thought a little bit more, and I was like, I think he's right. Let me explain that to you. I think he's partly right. In um, Matthew uh, chapter 5, uh, Jesus talks about how uh, God makes it rain on the righteous and the unrighteous 
at the same time. It means that God, like here in Vancouver, we think rain. Ah, oh, God doesn't like people who love him, and, and he doesn't love people who don't love him. No, it's the opposite. God loves people who don't love him, and he loves people who do love him. Um, because that meant when the rain came, that means that they could have a harvest, that they would be blessed um, and be able to provide. Um, God loves us, whether we acknowledge him or not. But I think if we're looking at his blessing in that way, I think if we're trusting the universe, it's almost like a pile of fertilizer. Um, growing up, my we always had a yard, which is, uh, in Vancouver, we have no yard. We don't even have a deck. Um, but in Langley, we had a yard, and always a big yard. And so there was always fertilizer in our yard. And sometimes fertilizer would be in a bag and just sitting there. And through little holes, you'd see like little sprouts come out. Or if it was just in a pile, there'd be like sprouts and grass growing all over the fertilizer, and then some patches throughout the, the grass. Um, that's what God blessing the righteous and the unrighteous, those who love him and don't love him, looks like. If, if we don't have our trust in him, it's like the fertilizer is just in that pile or just in that bag, and we don't get to receive all that, it, that we could have if we put our trust in him. But when we put our trust in him, it's like putting that, spreading that fertilizer over a garden. It's going to make the whole thing grow. It's going to make the whole thing uh, fruitful. It's going to make the whole thing flourish. And that's what trusting God looks like in, in comparison to just trusting the universe. Um, a few different areas that I have often heard people or seen on social media um, where people say to trust the universe are in suffering, in blessing, and when it comes to purpose in our lives. So today we're going to look at the difference between um, trusting the, the universe versus trusting God. So in suffering uh, with God, we can move to a place of hope. When we have our trust in the Lord, when we have our trust in God, and we go through suffering, we move from suffering to hope. Um, in Romans uh, chapter 5, verse 3, it says, We also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope, and hope does not put us to shame. I have had a sinus infection for like a month. It is horrible. Uh, it's a viral sinus infection, so it's, it's bad news. And um, for like three weeks, I just suffered. Uh, I didn't have any antibiotics, anything like that. It took pink eye to getting me to go and get see the doctor. I just thought it was going to go away, um, but I got pink eye, which also sucks. Who gets pink eye in their 30s? <laughs> it's for kids. Pink eye is for kids. Or people who, like, live in the hospital. So, no? Pink eye? No. Um, but I got pink eye and sinus infection. I couldn't think. I was suffering. And it was so hard to move past suffering. Um, honesty moment. I've been watching way too much House lately. Yeah, it's embarrassing, but it's honest. Uh, so... In my mind, I'm diagnosing myself, and I'm thinking, okay, I've got like a, there's probably a muscle inside of here somewhere, and there's an infarction. Um, yeah, I've been watching House. You, the words that you only use if you've watched, watched House. Um, for anyone who hasn't watched House, I don't recommend it. It's not great, um, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, anyways, so I'm diagnosing myself, and I'm thinking that it's, I'm just, you know what, they're probably going to have to remove something inside of there or there's something living inside of there that was my other thought i thought that there was like a big parasite living in there um which is so gross and so wild that that's what i was thinking but in suffering it's so hard to move past just your your moment right 
It's so hard to see beyond. But when we suffer, we actually get to grow in perseverance. When we persevere, we get to grow in character. God cares way more about our character than he does about our circumstances. Some people are like, oh, life is just so hard. Yeah, it is hard. But when it's hard, you get the opportunity to grow. You get the opportunity to grow in perseverance, in character. And then it goes to hope. Man, when you've gotten through something, you have hope for the next time you go through something hard. God wants us to be full of hope. So we don't have to be ashamed of our suffering. We don't have to be just stuck in our suffering, but we get to move past that and, and go to hope. Now, what, what wisdom would the Bible have on, on some, some suffering scenarios? Well, what about grief or loss? Well, the Bible tells us to mourn with those who mourn and grieve with those who grieve. Gr- grieve. <laughs> Whew. That was embarrassing. Um, But the Bible tells us to mourn with those who mourn, grieve with those who grieve. It also tells us that Jesus is is near to the brokenhearted. When we go through hard things, we know that we're not alone. Um, So I want that type of wisdom. I want to trust God through suffering and see what he can do. Because honestly, like a little bit of, Blessing is nice. A little bit of of his mercy is nice, but I want the whole thing. Um, What about when it comes to uh, blessing? What happens when we trust God when it comes to blessing as opposed to trusting the universe, like the universe provided? Um, You might be thinking, Dustin, why are you not talking about how you got the deal at at the tire store? Well... I'm glad you asked, because truly, we were blessed, and that's why we got new tires. Somebody saw the decrepit state of our tires and gave us money for the getting new tires. Yeah, we're so grateful. We're so grateful. Um, Now, do I know who it was? I don't know who it was. Someone gave it to us anonymously, anonymously, and... We feel so, so blessed by that, and we feel blessed by God for that. Um, but, <clears throat> sorry, guys. Um, when it comes to uh, God's blessing, I want to have God's wisdom for it. I want to have the whole thing. Um, and sometimes when we, when we think about blessing, we just think about it in a financial, financial sense. And it's easy to do that, but I think we're missing the whole picture. So, couple areas of blessing, one being financial, other relational, other areas of blessing in our life. How do we uh, handle it best? And so when we trust God, thank you, when we trust God, we can uh, handle blessing with with wisdom. In the book of Acts, there's a guy named Barnabas. And Barnabas, he shows up his first, like, time he's there. It's because he sold a piece of land and brought it to give the money to people who were in need. At the time, this is like early, early, early church. So where they were at the time, if you were a part of the church, there's a good chance you weren't allowed to go back to work the next day. Um, There's a good chance that you would have been ostracized from your family, ostracized from your community, and um, it would have been a tough thing to go through. Well, Barnabas, he was blessed, and so he was able to be a blessing to those around him. Um, It said other people were doing it as well. Um, For me, hard to believe that he sold everything. If I'm a betting man, he probably had some other properties and some other fields, but he was able to give out of what he had and was able to be a blessing to uh, the people in the church, the people who, who were needy. And later on, um, it, it talks about him being uh, the one who discipled Paul. Don't know if you guys know who Paul is. Paul had a rough start um, where Barnabas had a good start, right? He started generous. Oh, this is a good guy. Like they named him son of encouragement. That's what, that's what Barnabas means. But Paul, on the other hand, he started by killing Christians, 
So the people who are worried, that's because of, of, of Paul. So Paul started by killing Christians. He was in one town, was going to Damascus to kill some more Christians. And then um, on the way there, Jesus blinded him, knocked him down, and was like, I'm going to show this guy what suffering for my name's sake looks like. And he really did. If you look at Paul's life, it was wild. Um, but he ended up becoming a Christian that day as well. But everyone was afraid of him. And rightfully so. I'd be afraid of the guy who was trying to kill me one day earlier. It wouldn't be fun. Like, hey, let's take this guy in. That sounds good to me. Um, but, uh, but Barnabas did. I would imagine one of the things that Barnabas was thinking about was when Jesus in Matthew chapter 7 said, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your own eye when all the time you have a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly how to remove the speck from your brother's eye. I would imagine that Barnabas had done a lot of work taking the plank out of his own eye to be able to help uh, Paul take the speck out of, out of his eye. And so he went on to go on uh, different trips where they would preach the gospel to other, other towns, bring it to new places. And I, I think that that's what uh, being blessed um, by trusting in God when it comes to blessing looks like. He was open-handed with, with his, his financial blessing. He was open-handed with the blessing of forgiveness, of mercy that he's received, and he was able to hold that open-handed. And the Bible says um, that the world of the wise grows, sorry, the world of the generous grows larger and larger. Um, the Bible also says that he who lends to the poor uh, lends to God. Sounds good to me. I'd like to lend something to God, get paid back, press down, shaking together, and running over. That sounds good to me. Um, so I want to encourage you to trust God when it comes to being in a season of blessing. Um, what about when it comes to uh, trusting God when it comes to purpose for our lives? Um, I think of the TikToks for this one or the YouTube, whatever is when you scroll, it's usually like a bunch of words. Like if you put up all the words from the last scripture that we read and like had like three seconds to read them. <laughs> and then it's like kind of like ambient music with like a trickling water sound as well. And then it's just like, it's like, the, all, the words, it'll have like a big, long paragraph explaining something, but essentially what it's saying is like, the universe cares so much about you. The universe has a plan for you. Trust the universe. And that's like the, the crux of it. And it's like, that doesn't give me much hope. Um, or it's like some scientist guy talking, he's like, your life is, is useless, you know that, right? It's just all chance, it's all random, and just goes off, and it's like, uh. It's like, if you're not the best at something, why are you even here? Um, but I think when we trust God with our purpose, we actually get to realize how valuable our life is. He puts so much valuable, sorry, so much value in all of our, our lives. When we trust God with um, purpose, uh, we can be so encouraged knowing that um, we get to receive all the blessing of, of trusting in him. Um, and in the book of Acts, there's another guy. Uh, his name was Philip. And Philip, uh, I want to say, is such a good example of someone who trusted God with his purpose. Um, later on, 
So in the book of Acts, uh, they get to a place where they're feeding some widows, and there's arguments between the widows. There's like some racial tension that's happening. So instead of uh, wasting all their the apostles' time, they get some people who are full of the spirit and full of wisdom to come and help settle that dispute and administer the food to to the widows. And so he was one of the people uh, chosen, Philip. And so Philip, full of wisdom, full of the spirit, and he is helping give old ladies food. Doesn't sound that bad. I mean, full of wisdom, full of the spirit. I would imagine he had a pretty decent resume. I would imagine it probably wouldn't have been hard for him to find uh, work. But he trusted the Lord, and that was what he was, he was able to, to do, help, help in that area. And then, a little while later, one of his buddies, who was also doing that, was stoned to death. That sounds pretty rough. Um, and then... The church in that area was persecuted and scattered. It was like they had to leave or else they'd also be stoned to death. And so instead of him just being like, ah, oh, man, ah, what's, what's the purpose? What's the plan? He went to the next town and started sharing his faith, he started sharing about Jesus, and people came to know Jesus. And then uh, God spoke to him through an angel and told him to go to um, another town. And on the road to the other town, there was a, an Ethiopian eunuch who was reading some scriptures. And he's like, oh, hey, um, can, I, can I help you with that? And the Ethiopian eunuch was like, hi. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I don't understand. And so he helped the, he helped the Ethiopian eunuch um, interpret the scriptures that he was re reading and told him about Jesus. And then the Ethiopian eunuch um, agreed with what, what he was saying. And he was like, can I get baptized? And they saw a puddle, and then he got baptized in the, in the puddle. And then as soon as they were done, bat or he, Philip was done baptizing him, he sent him like, he transported him to another town. That's pretty epic to me. When we trust God um, with our purpose, we don't have to be afraid of, does this mean anything? We don't have to be afraid of, is there, there any uh, purpose in this? But we get to see him um, do incredible things uh, in, our, in our lives. Um, couple scriptures um, for anyone who's thinking, oh man, I just don't know really what the purpose that God has for me is. It says this, in Colossians verse 1, uh, sorry, chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, it says, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. I would imagine that when Philip was listening to the apostles' teaching, he probably heard them talking about praying for him, or they probably prayed for him to be filled with the knowledge of of God's will for his life. And I would imagine that as the circumstances changed, as the, the uh, challenges arose, I would imagine he knew that God had a plan for him. He knew that if he put his trust in God, all it is is just waiting on uh, an answer from, from the Lord. Another scripture, in James 1, verse 5 and 6, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all, without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, 
you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. We can ask God for wisdom. When we put our trust in him, we actually get access to ask. We have to believe. It takes faith. It's not just like, we're gone. Let me know. And then just not do anything with it. It's, it's an earnest ask and an expectation that he's going to answer. Um, so I want to encourage you to put your trust in God. Ask him. In Proverbs uh, 29 and 18, it says, Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. When we lack vision, when we lack that relationship with God, when we lack that closeness with God, that trust in God, it's so easy to get to the place where you're just trusting or you're acting like you're just trusting the universe as opposed to trusting God that he's got something good for you. Um, so I want to encourage you to, to be close with the Lord. Um, putting our trust in God, uh, it's funny, it's, it's transactional. We don't just think, okay, yeah, one day, I'm just going to put my trust in God as opposed to trusting the universe. Um, it's, it's transactional in the way that it requires us to be in relationship with God. And uh, God makes the first move. Um, God's a good father, a good parent. He makes the first, first move. In the Bible, it says that it's God's kindness that leads us towards repentance. Um, all repentance is is turning away from something you know is wrong and turning to the right way. It's making that determination that it's not going to be a part of your life anymore. Um, I have a little illustration of um, kindness leading towards repentance. When I was in grade nine, me and my boys, we were up to no good. We, uh, we went to the back. My parents' house, there's uh, trails in the backyard. So we went to the trails, and we were being naughty boys. We're smoking marijuana. We're smoking weed in the, in the trails. And we thought we were super slick. We thought we were far enough away. In hindsight, we weren't even close. We were like, my parent, my mom saw us through the window. <laughs> and then we thought we were being slick, so we came back the long way. And um, get home, me and my buds, and my mom opens the door, and she made food for us. And we're like, yes, the universe provides. Uh, <laughs> But my friends went and sat down, and my mom just kind of put her hand on my shoulder and said, not, you can't be doing that. And I didn't get in trouble. I didn't get grounded. I didn't get, yeah, I got off with food. Um, but as I was eating, I made the decision that I'm just not going to go down that road again. And it was the kindness of my mom that led me to repentance. So it was a turning away from where I was going and turning to something that was, that was better. So that's what kindness leading towards repentance looks like. God's the one who makes the first move. He's the bigger one. We're the ones who need his kindness. Uh, we can look at that little discount for the tires as just one small act of kindness. Um, but the biggest act of kindness was Jesus uh, being sent to receive the punishment that we deserve so that we could receive the blessing that he deserves.